Hi guys, I've got a great book to share with you about the ocean. One of my favorite places to go. And I can tell right now from that picture that that girl is doing one of my favorite things to do, which is walk along the beach and collect shells. So before I start, I want you to take a look at the cover, listen to the title, I'm going to tell you all of the information, and I've got a question for you after that. So it's called, What Lives in a Shell? by Kathleen Widener Zofeld, illustrated by Helen K. Davey. Uh, I want you to get this in your head. So, you know, we've talked about whether books are fiction, which means they're made up, or nonfiction, which means that they are real, they are informative. Um, and one of the ways we you could usually can tell, and we've talked about this, is whether there's a drawing or a picture on the front. That kind of leads us in two different ways of thinking. So I want to share this story, and at the end, I want you to decide whether you think it's fiction, made up, or nonfiction, informative. So this is What Lives in a Shell by Catherine Widener Zofeld, illustrated by Helen K. Davey. What Lives in a Shell? Do you know what this is? It's as hard as a stone, but it's not a stone. It's smooth like glass, but it is not glass. It is hollow inside like a cup, but it is not a cup. It is a shell. An animal made it. The shell was the animal's home. All right, you live in a house or in an apartment building. That is your home. Your home keeps you safe and warm. Lots of animals have homes. Birds build nests. Ants make tunnels underground. A bear likes to live in a cave. Here's the animal that lives in this kind of shell. It is a land snail. A land snail is born with a tiny shell. As long as the snail lives, it keeps on growing. As the snail grows, its shell grows with it. The shell keeps the snail safe. So let's take a look. So here's the shell, and let's look at the rest of the snail. Back here is the foot. I wonder how to put the shoe on. Up here is the mouth, the head, the tentacles in the front here, which are for smelling and feeling. And then it looks, their eyes look just like longer tentacles, don't they? You can go in and out of your home. You can run to the playground. You can wait outside for the bus. A snail never leaves its home. It takes its home with it wherever it goes. The snail pokes its soft head and its one big foot out of the opening in its shell. It uses its foot to inch along. A snail is slow. Birds like to eat snails. When a bird or other enemy comes around, a snail cannot run away. It pulls its head and foot inside its shell and closes the door. The snail is safe. Other kinds of animals live in shells, too. Shells come in many shapes, colors, and sizes. Turtles live in shells. A turtle shell can be bumpy or smooth. Most are rounded on top and flat on the belly. Baby turtles have little shells. As the babies grow bigger, their shells grow bigger. A turtle has four legs. It pokes its legs, head, and tail through the openings in its shell. Even though it has four legs, a turtle is slow. Have you ever had a turtle race? If a frog and a turtle were in a race, who do you think would win? And what about a cat and a turtle? If a turtle sees a cat, it may be frightened. It may think the cat wants to eat it. A turtle cannot run as fast as a cat. So the turtle tur pulls its head and legs and tail into its shell. The cat pats the turtle with its paw. The turtle won't come out. It is safe in its shell home. When you go to the seashore, you can find many different kinds of shells. You may see a crab walking on the sand. A crab has 10 legs. On its front legs are two claws. A hard shell covers its claws and the rest of its body. A crab shell fits it like a suit of armor. The armor helps keep the crab safe from enemies. But just as you outgrow your favorite shirt, a crab outgrows its shell. When it gets too tight, the crab pulls itself out. Underneath is a new shell. You may find snails buried in the sand. Some of them do not look much like the land snails. 
well unconscious are different types of snails that are only found by the sea. Here are some different kinds of sea snail shells. So look, on the Pacific coast, which is on the west side of our country, we have a dire whelk, a Santa Barbara spinner shell, a western rib top shell, and a kellet's whelk. Aren't those pretty? And then on the other side, the Atlantic coast, which is on the other side of Florida, or the east side of our country, you have a pale northern moon snail, a Junonia, a giant Atlantic pyram, and a honkling conch. I feel like I've got shells like that somewhere. I'm going to have to find them. Now, have you ever seen a snail shell walking along on crab legs? A hermit crab has hard claws in front, but the back end of its body has a soft shell. Its shell is too soft to keep it safe from enemies. A hermit crab lives in an empty snail shell. After a while, the hermit crab grows too big for its shell. So, he looks around for a bigger one. Some are too big, some are too small. Finally, he finds one he likes. He throws away the old shell and crawls into the new shell. True one. Now the new shell is at home. The snail shell helps keep him safe. You could look for clam and oyster shells at the beach, too. Clams and oysters are animals. They have no legs. They do not have heads or tails. Their bodies are soft, but they are animals. So let's see. Look at the outside of a clam shell and the inside. And look, there's a hinge right on the back. And then the same for this oyster, the outside and the inside of the oyster. Clams and oysters grow two hard shells. The top shell and the bottom shell look almost alike. The two shells are connected by a hinge. Scallops have two sh also have two shells. Here are some different kinds of scallop shells. There is the Atlantic deep sea scallop, the lion's paw scallop, that's cool, a zigzag scallop, San Diego scallop, ravenel scallop, and a giant Pacific scallop. Yum, this whole page is delicious. Most clams and oysters hardly move at all. They open up their shells to take in food and water. They close their shells tightly when enemies are around. Some scallops can swim. A scallop doesn't swim like a fish, though. First it opens its two shells, then it snaps them together quickly. This gets the scallop where it wants to go. Imagine that. When you find a shell, carefully look inside. It'll probably be empty. If a shell is empty, it may mean the animal has died, or it has outgrown the shell and left it behind. If the animal is at home, you can watch it for a while. Can you people tell how it eats? How does it move? What does it do when it feels frightened? When you go, leave the animal where you found it. Animals are happiest in their natural surroundings. If a shell is empty, you can take it with you. Now look, if you're looking at shells in a state or national park, be sure to ask a ranger or game warden before you take any shells from the park. Well, sure, you want to make sure everyone who goes there can enjoy it, correct? Try to find as many different shells as you can. Whether the shells you find are big or small, plain or fancy, remember, a shell is someone's home. The end. All right, do you remember that question I asked you at the beginning about whether you thought this was fiction, made up, or nonfiction, informative and not made up? What do you think? I'll give you a hint. It's informative and not made up. <laughs> Have a great day.